All right. Uh, yeah. So what I will just start here. So what I was saying is I just got this Bogner. I got to try the new Archon 50 uh, and uh, it's got a little bit more low end than the first Archon had. Uh, I don't know if you tried it. Have you tried the new? The new yeah, I've version? got them both. I've got them both. I, the 100 watt version I use, uh, I used a lot live, which I love. Um, yeah, they're both, they're, they're different amps. You know, they're not, uh, they're definitely got their own voices. Well, What's funny was with me was I got the first Archon, the, the 100, and it's like magic. It's got this clean, the clean sound, right? Yeah. And it's got the, the, the heavy tone. And I don't play out, you know, like in big venues like you. So I was like, yeah. I, I got to this point in my head. I'm like, oh, I don't need the 100 watt. So I bought the 50. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, but a little of the magic, just a little bit of the magic goes away in the 50. It's like it loses a little bit. For me, it did. Yeah. That hundred watts, badass. That's a badass. You can't replace it. Um, so it's well, you can replace it with with my new MP one hundred. That's that's. Well, that's, trust me, we're going to talk about that because uh, I have. Uh, well, obviously, we're. I got questions for that. We're curious. Um, but uh, so when I tried the new Archon fifty, it had a little, like I said, a little bit more low end, and I was like, oh, this is cool, right? Because you like I said yeah. it's different. Um, yeah. In fact. Uh, it, it kind of vibe to me, it's like they leaned it a little bit towards your MT-15 a little bit more. It's almost like I feel like they learned from your MT-15 what some of the, I don't want to say shortcomings the Archon is, but some of the things that the Archon didn't do, and they kind of moved it, that head a little bit towards that direction. Does it make sense? Yeah, but I, I, the, MT, the MT-15 to me is the, it's probably one of my favorite amps. And it just not because it has my name on it, but it's just, to me, it's more, it's more, um, present than the uh archons um i like like you i like the 100 watt version of the archon that's my that's a go-to for me but um but the mp15 and the mt100 to me are a step above and beyond it's, it's a, almost like a more a more clarity to it more depth to it more the cleans are better in my opinion the chimier uh the dirties are a little um singier and more aggressive at the same time but uh I, i'm an amp fanatic you know i'm surrounded surrounded by amps at all times so i'm <laughs> well, um, not so well that's that's kind of like i think that's what gave you that edge um you know you know you've been with prs uh you know since since not since the beginning but you know you've been with prs a long time since your your initial you know you're the second artist to ever have a prs guitar yeah and so you've probably seen the amp journey they've taken over the years you know what I mean? Like all of yeah. us have seen and, and they've done some really cool things and some odd things, you know, throughout the years. And, um, and I think the Archon was the first amp that I was like, Oh, cool. This is more in my vein. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of what I dig. Um, and that was really cool because I've always loved Doug Sewell. I, I got to interview him twice and I always liked him. And, yeah. um, and, uh, and then when the MT 15 came out again, it was like, okay, the, the thing about the Archon for me, when I turned down, cause I have to turn down. Yeah it sucks when the amp loses all its low end. And, and if you force EQ into that, then you lose your clarity. Yeah. But and you don't get that on, on the MT-15, it's got it right. all. Right, at, well, that's... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, at bedroom yeah. level, it, it retains its, its, its character, its tonal characteristics that I, that I love so much. A absolutely. Um, and then uh, what's funny is I have notes, <laughs> things I wanted to ask. One of the things that was interesting, since we're talking about the MT-15, we're going to go out of order <laughs> from what I wrote down. because we got, You know what blew me away with the MT-15 was, I, I reviewed the MT-15 when it first came out. Uh, and I was very lucky. I bought one as soon as it came out. I just bought one, uh, did one on the video to show, because everybody knew I was an Archon freak. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, you have to like, you know, you, when you have some viewers, they were like, hey, what do you think of it compared to the Archon? And I liked it a lot. However, here's the thing I couldn't believe. They changed it. I want to say a year ago from the six L sixes to the, uh, to the 50, I had to write down 58, 81s. Yeah. I yeah. like that better. It's better than the six L sixes. Yes. Yes. And I was, I was, uh, I remember getting a call from Paul and he's like, Mark, I got bad news. The place, the factory where we get our six L six tubes just burnt down. And it's so funny, you, not funny, but you hear this all the time. All the time. The corn, like the Cornford Amp Company factory burns down. The Marshall Company, you know, you get these, these special um, group of cabinets that are so great, but you can't get them anymore because the damn factory burns down. These factories need to stop burning down and taking away our best <laughs> musical instruments. Um, but in our case, 
I think we got lucky because I was such a 6L6, nothing else works for me, but a 6L6. So Paul's like, you know, just give, just humor me. I'm going to send you uh, uh, an amp with the 5881s in there. And it's, it's a Russian 6L6 style based military tube that um, he's like, we think it's great. He sends it down and I, I was kind of down about it. You know, I'm like, this is not going to be, a, it's not going to be as good. I can hear these things. It's not going to be as good to me. I plugged them in right off the bat. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is actually, and I brought my friend, I brought John from seven dust over. He lives down, you know, down, to, you know, close to me and a couple of my other guitar playing buddies, a buddy of mine, Wes house came over and uh, everybody's like that damn new tube sounds better than the six L six. It just does. And I don't, you know, thank, thank goodness. Cause we couldn't get the, we couldn't get them anymore. Well, what's funny about that is, um, you know, there's a huge debate, uh, it, we, cause for amps about how much tone the power section is actually creating for you, especially um, if you're not cranking yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So that was actually, you know, what's funny about that amp is that amp is probably the best illustration of what the power section can change on the yeah. amp. Um, okay. we, Oh, sorry. No, I I agree. Absolutely. So that leads me to the question. So what's funny was I, I asked a lot of the patrons of the channel and stuff, you know, what questions they want to ask you. And of course, everybody was like DMT 100. But I have a question specifically that I thought would be more interesting on the MT 100. Because um, I know you've been working on it for a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the question I have is now that you've kind of experienced this, this with the, uh, the, uh, the MT 15, you, I'm sure the original or maybe the one you have, the prototype has six L sixes. Are you going to go? Cause they're now they're using those GC 87s. Are you thinking about using uh, so, something like that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the 5881s. I mean, unless, oh, wow. unless, unless they send me an amp with a tube that I like better, I'm sticking with, with what I got. You know, I, I'm very, uh, uh, once I like something, I, I hold on, I cherish it. You know, it's like when I, I had to send back my MT 100, um, last month, to make changes on it. And I, I had to get on the phone with Paul personally and be like, Paul, if I send this back, you got to promise me <laughs> you will not touch it. You cannot change things because it's exact. I love it. And even, even the stuff I want to change about the amp, I don't want you to change on this one because I love what this does. Because the version I have of the amp right now, it's awesome, magical, but it's not user friendly on a certain channel. So it's, it's something that if, if some 13 year old kid buys it and turns the volume up too quickly, he's going to blow his head off. Cause it's so, uh, it just needs to be dialed in for, uh, somebody that's just at a guitar shop, twisting knobs. Right. Um, right now that channel is, uh, we're dialing it in. It's, it's, it, that's, what's holding us back right now is we're getting this, um, it's a three channel amplifier. Um, every channel is completely isolated. So nothing, nothing waterfalls into the next at all. Um, and the clean channel is incredible for a, for a high gain, uh, amp like this. It's got the best cleans I've ever heard for an amp like this. The dirty channel, it's almost like MT-15 grew up and became an MT-100 and got big and ball, you know, big ballsy, thick, right. uh, tone that cuts on the rhythm side and also sings on the lead side. It's that's the toughest challenge for me is to create an amp that goes jump, jump, and also sings when you play leads. A lot of times, a lot of those amps, and I won't name names because I love a lot of them back in the day that I went for that heavy metal guitar tone. The lead tone was always harsh to me. So I had to walk that fine line with uh, dialing this amp in to make sure it does that mean aggressive uh, rhythm muted kind of thing that I like to do but also is not harsh and it's got a great lead tone and we've nailed that. But the third channel, I told, uh, you know, I told the folks at PRS, I'm like, I want to have this third channel kind of, I want this amp to have everything I'd have at my home studio. Um, the thing I'm missing is that boutique, Dumble-esque overdriven channel. I want to go from a clean and hit the second channel and have it just be a, a nice, warm, overdriven tone that's somewhere in between the, um, the game structure of the, uh, how the amp uh, flows. Um, so think of a, uh, think of a dumbbell amp. That's what we're going after for the second channel. And it's a tall order because it's the most sought after amp of all times, the dumbbell. So we're trying to create 
this as just one of the three channels in this amp. And, um, you know, I've seen so many amp companies try to replicate the Dumble and nobody, you know, I've got a lot of folks that have done a great, excellent job, but nobody's nailed that Dumble thing perfectly yet. And I don't know that we will either, but we'll, we're going to try our best. Yeah, that, well, you have two, right? You have two Dumbles? I've had two. I, right now I've got one uh, Fender Deluxe uh, that was modded by by Dumble. I've got two cabinets. Um, I'm going up to New York on this next tour to uh, to try out a couple of Dumbles for a good friend of mine that has sold about 30 of them over the oh, years. Right. And he said that, that these are some of the best he's ever heard. So um, I got to make sure that I, I sell a car or something if I, if I fall in love with this amp. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is, uh with your with your tones over the years i always i always jokingly say this to my buddies that you're the most dangerous guitar player for tone to follow because you can tell like you were the first one i ever saw that was like oh my clean's going to be these fender amps my dirty's going to be when i saw you live in tempe and and uh and wolfgang had joined you guys for a couple i guess a couple shows and that was the show that night i think you were playing a a victoria amp the the i think you had the victoria i think you had the mesa boogie and i think uh, you had another one and of course it was amazing sounding right and it was huge it was just crushing us with you know volume and uh, tone and but what's funny was it was like you're very you were always very particular about like this amp is this tone this amp is this tone and this amp is yeah, this yeah. tone so when when i heard you know everybody started hurting the rumblings you're going to start making the mt100 that's the first thing that kind of popped in my head is like oh okay uh, because I, I talk about this a lot with when I get a chance to talk to touring musicians, because it seems like a lot of touring musicians over the last decade specifically have become more focused about streamlining the rigs mm -hmm. out of either necessity or just, you know, tired of having 50,000 things going on on the, on the show. Yeah, um, yeah. So it makes sense. Uh, so I can imagine you want kind of like everything in this amp, so it can just be the one amp you take. Kind of is that the plan? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a big believer, and I don't know if I'll ever get over it, but I love to have two amps going at all times because it's um, uh, it just to me sounds fuller. If I if I take my MT100 and I play it just by itself, it's going to sound great. But if I take an MT100 and I mix it with an Omega Amp Works Granifier and use the best of both amps, it's just going to sound be better it, to me. You know, it's, I'm, I'm a big believer in two amps for some reason. It's my entire career. Even if I had the best amp in the entire universe, I can find another amp that's going to partner with it and make it even better. Um, you know, I can mix them at different levels. It's just like being in the studio. Not a lot of producers are just going to take one amp tone and just have that be it. Um, as far as I've always done it, it's always been, let me bring in 20 amplifiers. We'll do the shootout. We'll take, we'll get the best six in there. We'll track like on this last record, the MT 100 is 80% of my tone, but the Cornford RK 100 uh, is about 20% of it on this last record. The Victoria V 40 is, is about, you know, 20% of the clean tone when the MT 100 is about 80. So it's a good mix. You know, it's just, it supports, you have all these frequencies coming at you and these different amps with their different setups carry a different frequency range that just fills out the sound of whatever uh, your your other amp is doing. So it's you know less is more when it comes to technical stuff, but 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 two amps together to me is just that magic thing. And I told I told Paul that when when they were talking to me about doing a signature amplifier, I was like, I'm not a one amp person i i can't you know if, if if somebody else comes out with this incredible amp that that i'll i'll play it with my amp um right but now you know it's, it's it's funny i just had a friend over um and we were just going through amps today and we did the whole let's grab this amp let's grab that amp let's grab this cabinet we just did we did it for about two hours today and he had never heard um a lot of these amps and he's he's like not because your name is on it but your mt100 is by far the best amp i heard today so it's been, I do that every time I have a friend who knows what they're talking about with tone, I'll come through and I'll give them the amp test and we'll do the blind taste test. And uh, the MT100 and the MT15 have been uh, the winners in the, in, in the rundown. Well, the MT, the MT15, I like the, I always love the saying punching above its weight. It punches above its weight. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I like it. There's a couple amps 
uh, there's only, you know, a couple amps that I've learned because that, you know, I review a lot of gear, uh, which is yeah. the new thing, of course, on the internet, right? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, and, you know, I've reviewed 800 products at this point, yeah. um, like you, A being to insanity. And it's fun sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes you're just like in your head going, okay, none of this, I got to stop. No, none of this should matter anymore, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but I love the saying punches above its weight for a lot of things because sometimes, you know, you get, you get into that part of your head where you're like, okay, I'm going to try some Bogners. I'm going to try this new Soldano. I'm going to try, you know what I mean? Whatever new, you know, flagship, amazing products out there. And then, you know, people who play, you know, just want to play and looking for good sounds, they'll ask questions. And you got to admit for like 700 bucks, the MT-15 punches way, way above its weight. You know, is it 700 bucks now? I think when it came out, it was 650 bucks. But yeah. um, to me, if you're a kid and you want to sound like, have the best the, to the tone of a guy you see touring on stage who could have any gear he wants that amp to me sounds like a four thousand dollar amplifier it sounds just as just as good as any four thousand dollar boutique high gain amplifier you know they're all you know a lot of them are great at that price point but the mt15 stands at 650 bucks right next to the uber shaws the vhts the boogies all those all the top of the line of those brands it sounds just as good in my opinion. And I, and everybody that I've, I've done those shootouts with agree. And it's, um, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I think it's, uh, by far the best amp you can get for that, for that price point. Well, the, the smartest thing about it that I've seen is, uh, in fact, when I did the, I went to the PRS, was it, what, what event was it? I think it was the last one they did, right. Where you could physically go. Was that 2018? Yeah. Sounds right. Gosh, I've been to a few of them. I can't remember the last time I was there, but. And when I got uh, there, they, you know, they're like, Hey, you want to interview Paul? And I'm like, no, I want to interview Doug. <laughs> and so I got <laughs> Doug and, and, you know, he's such a, you know, endearing person. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he took me up to the, to the, to his office and we went through his stuff and the, and I kept hammering him about the M15, MT15. And, uh, what I was hammering was I go, look, man, I, like I said, I've, I've, re I've reviewed so many of these damn amps. There's yeah. no way this is 15 watts. And he's like, well, you know, he's Texas accent. He's like, well, yeah. it's, it's probably closer to 18, but what's a few watts between <laughs> brands, right? Yeah, it's more, <laughs> and, like, more like 40, 40. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, I, I asked him, I said, I, uh, he told, he flat out told me that, you know, in five minutes, if he had to, in five minutes, he can convert that amp to 50 watts yeah. uh, in the interview. And I said, yeah, because, this is, uh, you know, when you do shootouts with amps, you know what I mean? And, and, and not for looking for your studio tone, but for a consumer to, to understand yeah. things. What we learned was overbuilding the amp, overbuilding the transformer produces the best results. And the MT-15, it, it has, it's over. The, you could look at those, those, those transformers. They're insane. Just, oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's transformers are huge. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find a, an affordable badass transformer for the mass market that that's available. But it's, um, it's funny. You mentioned the transformer thing, cause we were going through amps, like I said today. And, uh, I was telling him about this RK 100 amp that I have. That's one of my favorite amps of all time. And, uh, it's got the biggest transformer I think I've ever seen in an amp, you know, it's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, but it's, that's the, RK 100's transformer. Oh wow, that's a that's a lot of iron, man. It's massive. It's massive. You know, and it's uh, and it goes. You know, the tone of that amp is incredible. Um, that being said, it's not as great as the MT 100. The MT 100 is just massive sounding, and it's got two huge. I mean, the, both of the transformers are huge. Um, but it's uh, I can't wait to release it. You know, I just it's got to be perfect before it comes out and. Uh, We've waited long enough to make sure, you know, we've, we've made sure every, everything is perfect because it's like I said, it's right now it's about the coolest amp in the world for me, but for some kid that's just pulling it off the shelves and doesn't know much about chasing down the tone, he might kill himself with that second channel because those overdrive channels, when you just take the volume up just a couple notches and you've got your gain set too high, the volume just rockets. So I'm going to try to, I've talked to them about try to, try to smooth out that, that swell and that volume, no matter where your gain's at. And, uh, uh, we're working on it. So I'm going to go up on this next tour. Um, Doug's going to be nice enough to come in on his day off on Saturday and we're going to go into the factory and, 
and, and Paul, Paul, I, and Doug, and um, Rich are going to get in there and part, maybe even Bev and, and just try to dial it in even more because we've gone back and forth so many times. It's just so much better when I'm there in person. Yeah. Well, yeah. I could, well, I would imagine because it's, it's, uh, it's your ear. That's really what tunes that amp you, yeah. is your ear. It's your experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, you know, uh, like you, like you, you say, you, you collect amps, you're into amps. Um, I've learned uh, through the years that some musicians are talented musicians. Some musicians are talented at design, you know, products and stuff. And, yeah. and some are good at both. You know what I mean? And you seem to have that both thing you 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 tend to use your it seems to me ten, you seem to use your experience with playing music recording you know what i mean your ear and you translate that right to design you know what i mean for product yeah, it's um i'm just obsessive about it because it's the better your tone is i i feel like um like i'm the kind of guitar player who buys nine thousand when i was a kid nine thousand instructional dvds and, and, and vhs tapes and books and i get to maybe four of them you know but I feel like the better tone I have, the better guitar player I'm going to be, even if, if that's not the case. But I feel like in my mind, if I can find the best tone, it's going to make me a better guitar player. Um, so it's the neg it's, it's the constant quest to be a better player um, through better tone. And um, it just inspires you, you know, like if you plug into like I remember when I plugged into Paul Reed Smith's Dumble, his 50 watt Dumble. Ever since that day, I've been chasing down the perfect Dumble. You know, because it just made me, it just was, it was amazing. You know, it's not something I could use live for what I do. It's a different, different monster, but it's, uh, that's, that's been an obsession of mine since the day I played that. And then Paul uh, gave that to somebody and it broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know, that, that brings me, I gotta, this is self-indulgent just for me. I gotta yeah. share this with you. So I'm a guitar tech by trade. And I'm a huge fan of yours, of course, right? And I got to share this with you. I have a guitar that we call Fake Monty, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so obviously, as I learn all the Alter Bridge songs and all yeah. the songs you've done over the years, I had to get a guitar that I call Fake Monty, which is my PRS S2 Semi Hollow. And if you nice. notice, it, it doesn't have a truss rod cover on it. Gene and the PRS uh, people always say, hey, we'll send you a truss rod cover to cover that out when it's in videos. And I tell them, I go, no, because of Tremani and all the tunings that I constantly have to do this guitar, <laughs> because he does, you do so many tunings, which are amazing tunings. But I, I had to just like, all right, I have to abuse this guitar. And then right. I think I learned from you, I have OCD. I put yeah. the PRS metal pickups in it because yeah. you're on, you know, you're exposed bobbin thing. And then yeah. the, that I guess I have OCD because that just makes me like feel like so, so i gotta ask you what made you go yeah let's not cover one of the pickups <laughs> it, you know it was god it was so long ago when we when we went through it um you know i think it's in it's it's, it's in the head you know it's in the head and the visual in the head and the, the different tone of having the cover and un, 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 uncovered you know with the neck position being uncovered uh, i think the neck position is richer and warmer and then the, the bridge position has got to be sharper and bitier and those pickups i think i don't know if it's the case i think i've read somewhere that that uncovered is kind of warmer and, yeah. and covered, it covered is not so you know it just served the purpose of what i was going for with those with those two pickups usually when i'm on the, my neck pickup i'm playing clean guitar or um I rarely, I rarely even solo on that, on, on the neck pick, but a lot of people will. Um, but I, uh, live, I just stay on my, my bridge pickup and, and dive in. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's just being picky, I guess. Yeah. Cause it, it, well, yours was the first guitar I ever saw done like that, especially like a production guitar. And I yeah. remember thinking like, I thought it was cool. And then I went to order your pickups. And then I was like, I, I couldn't do it. So I go, so I call and I go, what's, so actually, I, I actually, I told a fib, I have your Tremonti neck pickup and then I have the metal uh, from PRS in the bridge. Cause they told, gotcha. you know, they told me, they go, that's close. And I go, all right. And I go, cause at least I have a cover. Um, and then I laughed cause I go, I, I never thought of myself as a person who would hang up on a, on an issue like that. Um, but what's interesting about that was, that's the other thing that, that brings this question, which is your, your PRS single cut. Uh -huh. is funny to me because 
without that single cut, I would have never got into PRS guitars. Um, yeah. I was, uh, I'm more of a Strat guy, but when I play single cuts, I like single cuts. And, um, and uh, I thought that was interesting when you came out with the single cut. And now if you look at it, that's built a whole like arm for PRS, your yeah, guitar. You know, it was, uh, you know, the reason it, it came about was they, they send me guitars and um, I loved them. You know, I loved Paul Reed Smith, but I remember buying one before I was with PRS and um, tried to play it on stage, but I couldn't because all the switches were in the wrong spots that just felt different. The tone wasn't what I was used to. So um, they sent me another guitar, they sent me another pickup. They sent me this, they sent me that. I was like, I love them all, don't get me wrong, but it's just not what I what I am. And um, that's when they said, all right, well, why don't we just design you a signature model and then you can have exactly what you want. And at that point it was only me and Carlos. And uh, just from being, you know, just from sticking it out and, and being picky and getting what you want out of something, I think is the best way to go about it. Because I think uh, when I was much younger, I was approached by um, Hamer guitars and they, they made good stuff back in the day, but it just wasn't quite uh, my thing again. And uh, they, and you know, early on there was other companies that were talking about um, endorsement deals, but the Pottery Smith thing, doing that guitar, I'm so glad I was picky about it and got exactly what I want. Cause now I get to play my favorite guitar. And um, you know, I think there's a lot of guitar players out there that, um, that, um, you know, might not necessarily play their favorite guitar because they have their name on it and because the company could only, uh, you know, maybe it's an SE version or something like that, but it's got their name on it, so they're playing it. I'm lucky enough to have my ultimate guitar with my name on it and uh, just being picky as hell got me there. And I think uh, doing the same thing with the amplifier, just being waiting it out and waiting it out and um, you know, as long as it took to get it to where it needed to be. I was terrified to release the amp be honest with you i'm such an amp fanatic that um it would have broke my heart if i came out with an amplifier that wasn't received well after i thought this is of all the amp collecting i've done over all the years and all the process of of hit or missing with all these amps over the years if i finally came up with this little lunchbox amp that everybody didn't like i'd feel like what the, what the hell am i doing with my life and my ears <laughs> so it was my one of my greatest moments uh, endorsement wise was when um, Sam Ash came over and and put the uh, best in show at the NAM when it came out. That was a uh, pretty, pretty epic moment for me. When the MT-15 came out, they sold like 6,000, I think the first day or some crazy number PRS yeah. did. It was so nuts. I remember because that was, I was there at the, uh, you know, at NAM, and they invited me to do a bunch of stuff. And you know, we were all like excited to see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what is it going to be? What is it? And, um, and, uh, I had seen, I accidentally, I'd seen it, the prototype or earlier version a year earlier. In fact, because we had talked about, uh, reviewing it right when it came out and then it got pushed back another year as uh. if I remember correctly. Um, and I remember like, eh, that was the talk of the NAM show that year. I mean, literally that was the product to talk about, um, because you did, you did, not only did the amp sound great, that's, that's a given. I think everybody was blown away by this price point concept. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not, that's not, that's I think with this, you're, yeah. That's huge for me. I was, uh, you know, I, uh, speaking of the, the price, that's one of the main reasons why I did this amp is because I was very afraid to do a signature amp because I didn't want to, um, worry that something else would top it eventually and I wouldn't be able to play it because I had a signature amp. I always want to play my favorite thing. So when I was online one day and I'm just, if I got extra time, I'll sit around and I'll be like top amps in the world, Google, Voodoo. And then I'll see something top selling amps in the world. I'm like, that's interesting. Let me see what that's going on these days. Number one, orange, you know, tiny tear, number two, this number two, three, number that they're all lunchbox amps. The top 10 was all lunchbox amps. And I was like, wait a minute. So why don't I do a low price point amplifier, make it the best I can, and then I'm not required to play it on stage if something else better comes along because it's a lunchbox amp and I'll make it the best I can. All my worries 
were, were silly because now I came up with this amp that I think is my favorite amp in the world, and the MT100 is going to be something I'll play forever. Um, but, uh, but anyways, my, my goal was to put a 5 before the price tag. Um, use 6L6s in it. All the other lunchbox amps were using 6V6s or 1, 2, you know, 1. Yeah, or one EL84s. Power. Yeah, or like yeah. 1 power tube. We're using, you know, we, we loaded that amp up. You know, I wanted that thing to hit the market and just, just explode because when you compare apples to apples, uh, to me at that same price point with all those other amps, it was no, no, no competition. The amp was just a, a monster. Um, so I just, I just made it very clear to everybody, you know, that I want this to be an affordable, affordable amp. That sounds like a $4,000 amplifier. And that's exactly what, when I talked to Sam Ash, um, at, at NAM, he came over and he said exactly that. He's like, this sounds like a boutique high end guitar amplifier. It's, and that's when he came over, I was sitting there, I was actually playing on the amp and behind me comes this arm with the best in show um, tag right on the amplifier and it blew my mind. It was, uh, you know, cause there's 75, there was like 75 or 7,600 products at the show that year. And um, to get one of those best in the shows was just, uh in the gear world was that's the that's like winning the grammy you know it's right it's, it was it was amazing because i'm the biggest amp like i said i'm an amp nerd so to get that to get that was uh was massive for me and then we only have you for um, like just a couple more minutes and i don't want to not talk about the new album since it you know obviously just came out marching in yeah. time great album by the way um yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, like I've, I've listened to all the other albums and, uh, I just want to ask you the question I have for you is the thing I noticed on the album right away, two things, at least it popped out to me. So I'm curious to see yeah. if that's something was you want, you've thought about, um, I put my notes cause I wrote notes when I was listening to it. Cause I knew I'd be yeah. talking to you. Um, I noticed that, uh, you, you're singing a little lower, which is cool, yeah. right? A little punchier, yeah. um, which was. I, I liked, and then I also noticed it had some of the songs had this like, uh, which was it, the tone and the sound was definitely reminiscent of, of everything you've done. But this new vibe, uh, I, I wrote that it has like a thrashy kind of octave fun kind of thing. And I th I didn't know if that was a conscious decision to do any of that. So I just thought I'd ask well, you about yeah, it. Well, thrash is one of my favorite speed metal and thrash was my favorite stuff growing up. So this band is my outlet to get that side of me out. Um, but, you know, the stuff I do is not, I'm not doing death metal, you know, I'm doing more um, lyrically like what a rock, normal rock band would do, but the music, I like to throw the thrash and speed metal in. Um, as far as singing lower, that has 100% to do with Frank Sinatra. I love Sinatra and I've spent a lot of time um, uh, dissecting what he does and how he sings and practicing it. And just because I love, I love the way he sings. and. Uh, my voice is well more suited for, for singing Frank Sinatra songs than it is singing these rock songs because it's, um, I'm always pushing. I can, I'll, I can sing Frank Sinatra all day long and not hurt my voice, but when I do this stuff, it's all, all of it is, is up at the top of my register. But on this record, I got comfortable with singing in my true voice at certain points where when, when I was younger as a singer, I never wanted to sound like myself I won't, you know, because nobody wants to hear their voice on a voice recording or anything. It's uh, nobody seems to like the sound of their own voice. Uh, well, a lot of people. I was one of those people. But um, so I'd always try to disguise my voice by pushing it, you know, more than it needed to be pushed. But with this record, um, I like to kind of just settle into who I am, you know, as a singer. And, and I hopefully I, I can settle even more by the next next record. Just be comfortable with your actual voice instead of coloring it too much well it's funny because i always thought you had a beautiful voice in fact the first tremani album when it first came out and i grabbed it uh i was somehow i don't know how uh being a huge alter bridge fan i never caught that you were singing in alter bridge so yeah. when i heard your voice i didn't even take note of that until later i was listening to alter bridge and all of a sudden i go hey that's that's not miles you know yeah, that's yeah. that's mark and i started hearing your voice and then it, I didn't even realize you even sang a song in Alter Bridge. Isn't that funny? Like I, all of a sudden, once I heard your voice, I could hear your voice throughout Alter Bridge. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you were kind of like, I think uh, 
I saw Nuno Bentcourt when he did Drama Gods, and I remember the first time seeing him going, oh my God, he can sing? I just assumed, you just assume a guitar player is yeah. in a band because they can't sing? Yeah, <laughs> so, well, you, you know, I'm, I won't name names, but there's a lot of guitar players that have done the singing thing, and it just didn't work for them. But, you know, I didn't want to be that. That's one thing, you know, when you come out with a record as a singer, after you've been a guitar player for so long, last thing you want to hear is the people like, dude, stick to your day job, stick to the, stick to the guitar plan, let, let the other guys sing. So when I didn't hear that after the first record, uh, it was, it made me want to try harder to be like, all right, I can, I can, I can, I'm not getting shot down for this. Let me try to improve what I'm doing. Um, and now, now to me, singing is, is just fun. You know, I don't worry about it. I don't, um, after that had, I was done with that. If there's a karaoke party, I'm the first guy on stage singing. It's not something that I'm, uh, when I play guitar, I feel like I have to live up to something. It's something that I, I've always, uh, I've been known as a guitar player for my whole career. And if I have a bad day, I, it's not a good thing. I got to live up to what I've done with the vocals. It's, it's still, a, you know, it's still fresh to people. They are like, Oh, well, I didn't know you saying so it's not something that I have to be worried about. It's something I just have fun with. Um, so singing to me is just a, uh, I never worry about it. You know, it's just. And, and that also one of the benefits of that you singing is that also led me to, and I, obviously everybody uh, to all of a sudden I just started going through Creed albums and ultra bridge albums. And I never really saw you cause it's just a guitar player thing to see guitar players as guitar players. I don't really yeah. sing you. Like I, I just always assume like the singer always writes all the songs. The guitar player figures out a lead and shows up. Yeah, and and, and I, hate sudden, that, I hate that mentality. Cause I, I, that was one of my main pet peeves through my whole career is I'm a songwriter. I write vocal melodies. I write lyrics. I write vocal parts of my, I like writing vocal melodies more than I like playing guitar. So um, when people just say, oh yeah, he's a singer. He must have written what he's singing all the time. And it's not true. In a lot of yeah. cases, it's just not true. You know, um, I'm not going to say that in all my bands, I wrote all the vocals because it's not true, but I did write a lot of them, you know, yeah. and uh, that's my favorite thing to do. Yeah. And that's, what's great about that album. It really, like I said, I like, I like things when all of a sudden I'm exposed to something and all of a sudden my mind opens up a little bit. And when I, like I said, when the Tremonti albums came out, your first inkling is, okay, he's going to do this side thing. And then when I was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, wait a minute. And I'm like, wait a minute. How much did he have to do with the other stuff then? You know what I mean? And you go back and you're like, holy crap. He's, he's like writing all this stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah it's the, the best thing. The most, my favorite thing to do more than, more than singing, more than playing guitar, more than anything is just writing songs, you know, taking something that doesn't exist and making it materialize into something that means so much to people and means so much to you as, as a writer too. It's, it's, it's a magical thing. Uh, you know, it's music is this, this crazy magical thing on this world and to be able to create it is uh, my biggest thrill in my life, you know? Yeah. Well, I appreciate it as a fan, obviously all your albums, everything you've done. I kept you a little long, but I, I want to thank you so much for your time. I'm thank super you. stoked for the MT100. I guarantee you the second it comes out, I'm going to be checking it out because um, nice. I'm already an Archon fan. I'm already an MT15 fan. I can imagine. And I tend to buy a lot of the amps that I just hear you mention oh, yeah. about. I'm like, oh, what's he mentioning now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to, you're going to, if you like all this, all those amps, you're going to absolutely love the MT100. It's uh Every time, like I said, whenever I have my friends do shootouts and I have all the high gain badass amplifiers over the years and we, do, we go one by one, MT100 is the winner every time. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, so much yeah. for coming on the Know Your Gear podcast. Um, thank you for the new album and I hope, uh, hope you have a great rest of the year. Awesome. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Good night.